Alright, so in the last video, I shared with you some advantages of having a master's degree in environmental engineering, just having a master's degree in general. Now I'm going to do a complete 180 turn and show you the disadvantages of having a master's. So I just want to be realistic here, tell you the blunt truth. It's not all sunshine and rainbows after you get your master's. There's a lot of disadvantages to getting it, whether that be through the journey or even after the journey once you actually get the degree itself. So again, I just want to be very blunt and very truthful when I'm telling you why it's not the best idea to always get a master's degree. And I'll give you some examples specifically towards environmental engineering, but I do want this to be broad enough to where it applies to all types of master's degrees. So later on in the video, you will see specific examples of the disadvantages to a master's in environmental engineering. Alright, so the first disadvantage is the tuition cost. Now, here in the United States, it costs roughly 10000 to 20000 a year, yes, a year, for getting a master's degree. So if you take like one year, it might take $10,000. Two years, 20000 or, you know, so on. So the longer you take, the more you'll have to pay. And realize that this is just for tuition. So you have to also include things like room and board and food and other things like that. So just 10000 a year set aside just for school. Plus, you might have to pay for rent if you live you know, near campus and you're renting out an apartment or a townhouse, you're sharing with roommates, you have to include things like food, your groceries, all that monthly and yearly, that'll add up. Personally, I went to the University of California, Irvine, and that college is a pretty prestigious university in California, so normally the higher the prestige or the higher the title, the more you'd have to pay. And I'll show you a picture of how much it costs for my tuition. So somewhere on the screen, you're going to see the amount per quarter that I had to pay for. So the total cost that I paid for at the end of my graduation was roughly $17,500. And again, this is just for tuition. This is not included room and board and food and all that other stuff that I had to pay for. This was just for me to enter school. So I had to pay like an extra $800 for monthly rent and whatever, how much hundreds for food. And mind you, this uh, program that I had was accelerated. So instead of saying like normal two years that normal people take when they take their masters, I took it in like 1.5 years or like four quarters, depending on whether you're a quarter system or a semester system. Had I stayed the full two years, that would have been six quarters. So for me, specifically at my school, we had three quarters a year. We had fall, winter, and spring. So take that number of 4,300-ish times four, that's how much I had to pay for, 70,500. But if I stayed two years, it would have been 4,300-ish times 6, which would have equivalent to 26,000 at the end of my graduation. So for me, being in an accelerated program, I saved roughly $9,000 just because of that. I wanted to get out of there as quickly as possible because I did not want to pay another $9,000 just to stay for another two quarters. Doing this accelerated program was financially the best decision in my life. There are classmates of mine who chose to take the full two years rather than take the 1.5 years, which I didn't understand why, but even so, they could have saved a lot more money had they chosen the accelerator program because you're paying per quarter. So again, you want to get out of there as quickly as possible because it makes the most financial sense. You're still getting the same degree compared to someone who's taking two years or 1.5 years. It doesn't matter. You're still getting the same degree. You're just, someone's just going to be paying a lot more than the other. So to me, tuition costs and student loans afterwards, that is like the biggest major contributing factor to why I think it's like the biggest disadvantage to getting a master's. But this is just one disadvantage to getting a master's, so just keep watching. The next disadvantage is the workload and the stress. So yes, you graduated your bachelor's. That was stressful, right? Now imagine doing that again for another two years, except maybe twice as hard, because now you're no longer an undergrad who's like young and dumb. Now you're professional and you have people who look up to you. So now you might have like students looking up to you to be their TA or you might have a professor who's looking at you hoping that they fulfill their project and you still have to juggle between academics and a work-life balance. So all that is just really stressful to have and again you're doing this twice as hard twice as fast. Undergraduate usually takes like four years now condense that to two years and you have double the responsibility so that's just four times the hardness. And it's going to be really stressful, especially because now you're in the engineering field. You thought you had sleepless nights during undergrad? Now, man, it's much worse during your master's and your PhD if you ever decide to get one. The next disadvantage is the opportunity cost. So here's a perfect example. Let's say you and your friend, they both graduated at the same time. And your friend who has a bachelor's, he went on to find a job right away while you went on to get your 
master's program. So that means your friend is working and you're at school. And let's say for example, your friend makes like 40,000 a year. That's like a normal decent pay for undergrads who just got their bachelor's. That's like the average. So that means in two years, he'll make 80,000. I'm not gonna get into the taxes and everything, but let's say for example, he makes 80,000 after two years. But here you are at school, not working. That means you're not making money. And in fact, you actually lost money because you're paying for tuition. And that means that if you're in the same boat as me for my tuition, that means you're down $26,000 after two years. So in two years, your friend here has $80,000. They're making $40,000 a year. They have $80,000 while you have negative $26,000. Just let that sink in for a bit, okay? This is the math behind the opportunity cost that you lost. Sure, yes, you can probably make more than that if you find a job right away. And this is where you expect and hope that you find a job that pays more in the future. You hope that this will be a good investment, but we aren't for sure whether or not that will happen, and you'll see that as the next disadvantage. You aren't for sure if your master's degree will even pay higher compared to a bachelor's, if it's even necessary, or if it will even be useful. So here's the next disadvantage. The next disadvantage is that it probably might not even be useful. So I've seen people who jumped into getting a master's in some field, but after they graduated, they couldn't find a job right away in that field. So they ended up wasting however much money they spent on that field to get their master's. And then they don't have a high paying job that paid for it or they hate their job or just something along the lines of that. So they spent all this time, their effort, their money to get some masters and they aren't even using it or it's just not even beneficial to them. So here's my personal example. So I graduated with a bachelor's in chemistry and then I graduated with a master's in environmental engineering. But after I graduated, my first job was not even in environmental engineering. It was in a microbial lab looking at cancer cells. So that in no way is related to environmental engineering at all. When I got that job, yes, I was happy I had a job, but I felt like all my effort into getting that degree, it was such a waste. Yes, that was an opportunity for me to get my foot in the door. I only got that job because I was able to intern with them because of the sheer convenience of the location of that job. So again, the opportunity was there because of the convenience, but in terms of like future long-term growth and interest into that field, that was not what I wanted. I did not want to spend $26,000 on an environmental engineering degree to get a microbial cancer research lab job that had no relation to what I worked hard for. I didn't learn any microbial stuff during school, so like what relevant experience could I bring to them and then what other future growth can I see if I didn't learn anything from them. I can't do anything in that field. Overall, that microbiology job just wasn't related to the field that I worked so hard for. So I felt like it was just a waste. So just take that into consideration because everything that you do, everything that you work hard for, it might not work with you. It might not work for you. You might not even be in that field after you graduate. Or you might get a job in that field, but it turns out that you hate it. So what are you going to do now? You just spent $26,000. You wasted two years to get a degree and you hate it. This just goes to show that you should always take into consideration what is the likelihood that you'll actually enjoy this field and whether or not it might be useful. Make sure you look at the job market and your area too. So let's say it is in high demand, but it's just not in high demand at your area. So you might have to move out. That means you'll have to take some sacrifices here. You'll have to move, you have to leave your friends, leave your family, move to a different state. Maybe you live alone or you live with roommates. There are a lot of things that you have to sacrifice now because of just that. If you want it to be useful, then you have to take these sacrifices. So again, just take into consideration all these disadvantages before you go out and pursue some or any master's degree. Yeah, so it's not all sunshine and rainbows. There isn't always a light at the end of the tunnel. There isn't always a happy ending. You might hate what you do. You might hate what you get. You might hate the fact that it's unfair and you spent all this time, this effort into getting some degree that just ends up not helping you at all. It's not beneficial, turns out the pay isn't exactly what you wanted it or what you read or what you thought it'd be, but that's life for you. And again, I'm just here to tell you the truth. Sometimes it's not going to be good for everyone out there. Hopefully this video was useful to you, and if you have any questions or suggestions, just leave a comment down below and then I'll try to cover that. I don't know whether you want us to be like just broad general or like environmental engineering related. I can cover both if you want. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Don't hate me for saying this. Don't get mad at me if I'm telling you the truth. I know life's unfair. I'm just here to reveal that truth. Alright, so I'll see you in the next video.